Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is our third and final town hall, but of course, we are always going to be available for more questions as we move closer to our start date. I'd just like to start um, by having Dr. Mr. Exanthus um, welcome us all. Okay. Thanks, uh, Marianne. <clears throat> I just want to say good evening and uh, thank you again for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. And again, not to spend a lot of time, but I, it's worth mentioning every time to thank everybody in the school community that's working tirelessly, uh, as I mentioned last week, to come together with a plan that um, we feel confident that will help us uh, with the opening of school. Um, having said that, uh, I just want to mention you're going to get some current information because the information changes uh, every day, it seems to think. But I do want to tell you just a couple of things. Uh, when we started this week, I think there were six schools in Orange County that were um, going to open. And now we're down to, I think, four. Two dropped out. So if even my number was, was not right, two of them have decided to push it back for at least three weeks, maybe a little longer. doesn't matter. But um, so I called, I spoke to two superintendents uh, who are going to try to open as we are on um, the new year with students in a hybrid model. And uh, I called to say, you know, they're dropping around us. Am I missing something? It's value central because we're moving forward. And in both the conversations, they both felt that, no, we were on the right track. And, um, the, and I'll give you two reasons why. Um, what the conversation was and what we spoke about today. We had a, uh, a, a meeting today for almost uh, four and a half hours and uh, spoke to the group. But the, the two main things is by waiting to the third week of this September, I don't know what we gain uh, by that. Um, what we might, what might very well happen, and we're not going to can't predict it, is that the virus is going to come back at a, a, a rate that right now is the lowest that has, has been in Orange County since this started, and that we never get a chance to open up. So that's the one thing we we don't want to risk that. The second thing is that 66% of our uh, people about now we figured it was a little higher, but some people are opting to go with the um, the online route have decided they like us to have their kids come back, and we want to uh, to accomplish that. We want to we have the opportunity to do that for the community. We feel, as I said last week, that's what we're obligated to do. So we, we want to be able to offer that. And the last thing, and I've heard this repeatedly from teachers, from parents. Um, I saw a couple of young ladies the other day at Greenwalls uh, that they're desperate to get back to see their friends, but more important, their teachers. And if we have to go back out, I feel that if we've even had two weeks or three weeks or how many, how much limited time it may be, that will give us an advantage that the kids got to meet, the, the kids that decide to come in, uh, had the opportunity to meet their teachers, uh, that we have to go out, which will serve well for us to better serve them. Knowing who that person is, who that individual is, I think will go a long ways. And that's not just my opinion, that's the opinion of um, a lot of people that I've talked to. So thanks for listening to that. Um, Mary Ann and the rest of the, the task force is gonna give you a lot of good information. But again, thank you for your support and um, tuning in and I hope uh, We'll continue to answer questions uh, as they come tonight, but if you have anything, certainly uh, call any of the people you think can help you in, in any way. Thanks again. Marianne, you got it. Thanks, John. Thank you. So as we said um, on our message when it was sent out yesterday, this is our recommendation that we move to our hybrid um, reopening plan. There will be discussion at our board meeting on uh, Monday night, so I encourage you to tune in for that as well. And if there are any changes after that meeting, we'll be sure to inform you on Tuesday morning. 
So this is our final town hall. Before I get started with the questions, I do want to encourage you. Um, our communications person, Patty Bear, has done an amazing job with our website. Many of the questions that we're going to answer for you now are also on our website. It is updated weekly. So I do encourage you. There is a guidance document for parents that talks more in depth about our online remote learning plan. It has all the expectations for students. Um, there's a wealth of information about safety and health. So I do encourage you to go to our website. The first question here is in regards to attendance. How are full-time working parents supposed to get their children logged on to classes three days a week? What is going to be considered an absence if working parents can't get their children logged in at the required times? And again, it is important to understand that we encourage you to be in, especially on Wednesdays when it's 100% synchronous. However, if you cannot, those Google Meets will be recorded. There will be assignments that are posted in the Google Classroom, and you can do those um, later on in the day when you return from work. And I believe that we are going to be about a day behind in attendance. So if a student completes his work in the Google Classroom, um, he will not be counted absent. Mr. Salamander, did you want to add anything to that, or did I get that right from our conversation today? I'm good. Okay. As far as the curriculum, again, I do ask you to take a look at the um, guidance document. It says here, for elementary remote days, would it be possible to have the independent assignments posted earlier, earlier than 9 a.m. so working parents can get a head start on the assignments? I have not had a chance to talk to, um, I'm, this is um, elementary, so we will reach out. I'm not sure if that would be possible, but I'm thinking that there is a, a good possibility that teachers may be able to. But I would encourage parents that have this issue to reach out um, personally to their teachers to see if that is possible. Are students required to use the school provided Chromebook or can they use their own? They most certainly can use their own device. However, it does need to be Google compatible. Um, so they can use their own devices. Um, I would not um, recommend using phones as your primary device or even iPads, um, a, a laptop or a desktop or a Chromebook is your best choice. What flexibility is being offered with online class? Right, in, Mrs. Baxter in the chat said, in school, it has to be a school-owned device only. Absolutely, just for the remote at-home learning, it can be either or. Is there flexibility being offered with the online classes? Yes, we just talked about that. Um, this is just a normal, everyday question about when, how will the younger children and new students in the elementary school find their classrooms? So that would be just like in any normal year. We always have a wealth of people around the elementary schools. We always basically say all hands on deck. Um, element kindergartners and first graders and new students are escorted to their classrooms. We will, of course, be social distancing, but they will be escorted to their classrooms. So you're correct here. Last year's distance learning model was absolutely inadequate. We have to remember that at that time we were in, um, like we like to call it triage, that it, we were in crisis. We had a very high infection rate. We had essential workers that were being ta max, maxed out and, you know, we had a lot of crisis. We are not in that position right now. As Mrs. Griffin was saying today, we have one of the low, we have the lowest infection rate that we have had during this entire crisis. So, we, have, we absolutely know that we needed to do a better job with the online learning. And um, as is explained in detail in the guidance document, that is going to be a combination of asynchronous and synchronous instruction. And it will look very, very different than it looked in the spring. Um, a question here about hotspot availability. We do have some hotspots available. We are going to need to put a system in place for parents to request those. It is absolutely only for parents, uh, families that do not have internet service and cannot get internet service. So we would need to um, be provided with the reason why one is, um, is needed. But if you are in need of a hotspot, if you could please reach out to me um, and we can discuss that. Homework. 
So in the, in the hybrid model, there really is not going to be something as considered as homework. All, all work is e either going to be an online um, remote assignment or an in-school. There will not be a differentiation between homework, and that is in the guidance document. Um, okay. So online learning is mostly synchronous. Remote instruction is a combination of asynchronous and synchronous, but more of the asynchronous. So on a day where team one is in school and team two is at home, teachers could live stream a, an assignment or they could possibly post an instructional video and an assignment. But there will definitely be um, a great deal of contact on Wednesdays where teachers will be meeting with their students throughout the course of the day. At the elementary level, we were able to assign one teacher per grade level um, in every elementary building. So those children that have the have picked the hybrid have been very fortunate because those children will be able to have a 100% online teacher. If we continue to get more and more children who um, ask for the online model, that may not be possible because right now some of our online uh, classes are maxed out. Will resources be provided to assist with elementary mathematics? Absolutely. Um, I will reach out to our consultants and we will put something together for parents. We could possibly even have a parent um, workshop where you would sign into the Google Meet and you could work with our, our math consultants. So we could absolutely do that. Sorry. Students will not be on the Chromebook for six hours. So this just says, will my child? So I don't know if the child is elementary or secondary, but as we talked about, they will be, um, elementary students should really not be looking at a screen for more than two hours a day. We do know that research. So there will be times where they are on the screen and then there'll be other times where they may be reading or writing or doing some type of hands-on activity at home, but they will not necessarily be on the screen. And the same could be said of high school. Did you want to add to that, Jamie, or trying to look or anyone else? No, just that, you know, we're, as much as we're trying to do as much synchronous learning, um, you know, sometimes it'll be maybe 10 minutes and then students will be working independently, you know, so direct instruction versus uh, independent work or group work or things like that. So similar to a structure if we were in a normal classroom, so they won't necessarily need to be on the screen for that entire duration. Right. Thank you. So the question here is why are the special ed classes not be not being given a choice to do 100% virtual learning. Well, they are. Um, every every child has been given a choice to do 100% um, online. We have offered our um, our special ed children as well as our um, most neediest populations the opportunity to come in five days a week for in person. Um, however, they do not have to. So I'm sorry if that wasn't communicated well, but absolutely any special ed student uh, parent has the uh, ability to call in and ask for their child to be in 100% online. Great question here about the STEAM lab. We worked so hard with your support to develop an amazing STEAM program, and that is always in a separate classroom, which is the question here, but um, we are not certain right now that we will be able to run the STEAM labs as we have done in the past in the elementary because of the fact that everything is so hands-on and that kids work together in collaborative groups. John, Mr. Salamanda, did you want to add to that? Apologies. I hit the roll button again. Um, so, yeah, we are, uh, the STEAM teachers are trying to figure out how to still do STEAM type activities, but not have them uh, the way they were before. So they're looking a lot more at things like coding um, and you know, programming or finding ways to um, isolate uh, any kind of manipulatives that the students might need so that they can be used and then um, cleaned and then, you know, uh, returned. So uh, they're working on it. They're, they're working hard. But we uh, don't have a, a definite answer on that just yet. So as far as the health screening, did you want to take that, Con? Is 
So in reference to, um, will the nurses, uh, period, how are they going to periodically screen children? So any child that walks into the health office, if they're not feeling well, will be screened. And that just in involves some additional questions besides our assessment. It will involve questions as, um, have you been around anyone that was ill? Anybody that's been tested positive? Have you traveled anywhere? So we will add those questions into our general assessment. They're usually asked anyhow, but we will make sure that they are in there and that they are asked every time a student comes in not feeling well. So that's, it's not gonna be every student we're gonna go pick on someone. It's gonna be anybody that comes to the health office not feeling well. Okay, and will teachers' temperatures being taken daily before entering the building? Yes, they have to fill out a, a questionnaire every single morning prior to entering the building, which does answer the same questions that we will be asking your students about travel, about being around anyone that has been ill or caring for anyone that's been ill or have they been feeling well, and they will have to um, take their temperature also and make sure we are asking them to document that they do not have a temperature of 100 or above, otherwise they would stay home. The next set of question is on regards to our drop off pickup and start times for school. Um, did you want to talk about the start time um, at the high school, Mrs. Baxter? Sure. So um, the start time for students will still be the same in terms of um, our first period class starting at 725 and the day will end at 152. Um, but because we anticipate the morning arrival and routines to be a little bit longer, um, we are, the buses will be unloading at 7, 10 a.m., um, giving students time to enter into their assigned entrance doors. And entrance doors will be based upon colored zones and where their first period class is, with the exception of anyone who needs breakfast. Um, and also, we will obviously now have an additional amount of parents dropping off in the morning um, due to the situation. So that will also take some time. Um, we're going to get out some more details about that procedure. And then, then as students are getting out of their cars, assessing their temperature along with as they enter the building. Um, so we anticipate the morning routine to be a little um, slow at first as we get used to that routine. Um, however, the classrooms will be available for students to immediately go into them at 7, 10 a.m. because the teachers will be there um, to welcome the students. Great. So there's a question here about the elementary schools and uh, the fact that we're encouraging parents to drive their children to school, which we are, and asking if the drop-off time will be moved earlier. We are not moving our drop-off times earlier. We do anticipate that although we will have more parents driving their children to school, we're really only going to have about a third of the population coming to school on any given day. Um, so we're not anticipating that it'll be as drastic of a change in traffic as some people may think. Did you wanna talk at all about the arrival, Mr. Salamando? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yes, we, we, like, I'll give you the example in my building right now, I'm estimating about 165 students a day coming to school on the in-person days. And out of that number, there'll of course be a no quite a number of children that'll be on the bus. So um, it should be a relatively easy flow as far as uh, the parents who are dropping their children off. And like Mrs. Uh, Baxter said, uh, Ginda Baxter said, um, it'll take a little time for us to get used to the routine. But once we get the routine down pat and parents know what to do and children know what to do, um, it'll start to, um, the time frame will start to shrink and go back to a more uh, normal in-step time frame. Thank you. So there are some specific questions here about specific schools. Um, and basically what I would like to say is that very soon you will be getting um, emails or letters from your individual principals with very specific information. After our um, Monday board meeting, we will be sending out more specific information by building that has to do with what arrival will look like, what pickup will look like, what the Chromebook distribution will look like, what kindergarten orientation will look like. So all that information is forthcoming. Um, there's a question here about post-session. It says, if there is no post or pre-sessions, how will students be offered extra help when needed? 
Yep, so although the students won't be able to remain for that um, opportunity, uh, teachers, as always, have uh, um, time to meet with students during um, their professional period, um, also during collegial time as well as an opportunity to meet with students. So there are opportunities throughout the day. Um, even many teachers meet um, during their plan or, or you know, are flexible with their time to allow for individual Google Meets as they're needed. Um, we also anticipate our guidance counselor meetings being on those off days for students. Um, so when they're at home, uh, the guidance counselors will be setting up meetings with them as well during that time. Thank you. There was also a question here about the Healthy Kids program and that there was now a link on our site and that is probably true. Um, however, if you just go to healthykidsprograms.com you will find all the information that you need about healthy kids and that's healthykidsprograms.com. Um, next section has to do with um, IEP accommodations. So I'll let you take these, Mrs. Patchen. Do you have the questions in front of you or do you want me to read them? Uh, if you could read them. Okay. Um, how will IEP accommodations for students choosing the hybrid method be handled? Like okay. for example, test read. Okay, so uh, accommodations will be based on whatever we would need to do between what is being offered with the classes and what would need to be done if something, uh, a small group would need to be set up for children who need to have their tests read to them. Um, they'll have to probably either print out something or something would be sent to the home for them if there is some kind of written test. Okay. Um, and again, we have a question here asking why we are requiring them to be in school five days a week. And so I just want to say one more time, we are not requiring special ed children to be in five days a week. If you do not feel that is safe, you absolutely have the ability to request the um, hybrid um, remote learning, 100% um, online learning. Um, Another question here about an 11th grader who has a 504 that says he re he receives a copy of teacher and class notes at the end of class. Um, I mean, I would imagine that's just going to be done through Google, the Google Classroom, but Georgia, did you want to? Yeah, I mean, there'll be, I'm sure within the Google Classroom, there'll be notes, still teachers will be posting um, various different assignments. So they'll have everything on their Google Classroom. And I think Mrs. Baxter, like as far as how the high school is set up as well, correct? Thank you. So there's another 10 questions here about masks. So I'm going to turn that over to Ms. Griffin, who will answer our questions about masks. Okay, so the first question was, will children be able to remove their mask if they are sitting and learning, will they have to keep them on? So, yes, the masks have to be worn in, cl in the class. They will be allowed mask breaks. The mask breaks will be done not only during their lunchtime, but also if they're outside, they will have mask breaks or in the classroom where their windows and the doors are open. So there's good airflow in there. They might not all take it at the same time. It may be staggered in the classroom but they will be able to um, take the masks off at certain periods of time. But they will be required to keep them on when they're asked to do so on all other occasions. The next um, question was, can, a, can they wear a tube or a neck guard? Uh, some of them are called gaiters. And yes, as long as the, the mask is covering the nose and uh, under the chin, it has to extend that and no open gaps on the sides. The next question was whether um, we can legally require a mask for those that wouldn't be medically tolerant to doing so. So there is some great um, documentation by the American Academy of Pediatrics and also the Department of Health that states if a child's unable to wear a mask that they, we allow that if they cannot wear a mask, but they do need to see, be seen by their healthcare provider and their healthcare provider has to give us a detailed medical care plan stating how we're going to keep their child safe as well as keeping those around them safe. So they do have, if they have to have accommodations, they do have to have a care plan. And that is coming, again, that's from the Orange County Department of Health as well as the American Academy of Pediatrics. So if you need a medical reason or you have a medical reason, please see your health care provider and make sure they write a detailed care plan. I will be, we will be forwarding them. All school nurses will be forwarding them or asking um, 
for clearance from the Orange County Department of Health once that care plan is in place. The next question, would it be okay to send my child with two extra masks labeled with his name? That would be wonderful. And if they, if they aren't sent with them, we do have extras available. Um, you could read that other part that we don't yeah. Okay, and, and I will read that other part. As always, your hard work and dedication during this difficult time is beyond appreciated. You all have done such an amazing job. So thank you, whoever wrote that. That is wonderful. So I thank you for that. So from the frequently asked questions, masks and social distancing currently being discussed with the Orange County Health Commissioner. So we have gotten further guidance from them. And again, the Orange County Health Department has put out a frequently asked question for schools that states what they are requiring. And masks along with social distancing will be required in Valley Central Schools. And mass breaks outside or in rooms with open windows and doors uh, will be allowed. And again, that document is now on our webpage. So thank you, Patty Bear, for putting all that information up. But again, if you'd like to read that, that is on there in detail. Okay, the next one, mass breaks, in class, the same thing, the mass breaks will be done. Mass with vents. So mask with vents, uh, are they allowed? And the answer is no on that. The CD states, the CDC uh, states that the mask with one-way valves or vents allow um, for exhaled, expelled respiratory droplets to enter the air, and it does not prevent the person wearing the mask from transmitting COVID-19 from COVID. So we do not want those masks in, in schools. So they cannot wear masks with valves. The next one, in reference again to masks and what kind of um, coverings, it doesn't specifically state what coverings are, are allowed. Um, bandanas are allowed. The gaiters are allowed. That was one, one layer masks are allowed. Again, it has to cover the mouth and the nose um, and go over, under the chin. You shouldn't have open gaps at the sides. And again, ones with vents are not allowed in school. So, and, and the next one, the same thing with vents. Okay, so yes, the one with gators that are dangerous. Yes, there is some documents out there that are stating that gators are dangerous. That documentation is not um, peer reviewed. It's, uh, it's not evidence based. So we're just waiting to see if we find out something different, then we will make sure we get that out to parents and let them know, parents and guardians, that these, you know, what the recommendation is for not them for them not being used. But again, we do not have that as saying that they cannot be worn at this time. So the next question involves the mask with valves again. And again, that came from the CDC with one-way valves or vents. They, they do not protect other people from that. So they are not allowed. The next question, I go right to the next one. The next one was on vaccines. Will students be required to get a vaccine to attend school or once they're available? And I have not heard anything from the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, which is from the CDC or the Department of Health stating that they will mandate this vaccine, a coronavirus vaccine when it comes out. Flu um, vaccine is not mandated, so I doubt they would have a coronavirus vaccine mandated. But again, I have not heard anything, so I don't wanna say whether they will or not. I just have not heard anything yet. Um, allergies. Children who have allergies and are susceptible to exhibiting some of all symptoms of COVID at any given time, will these children be sent home pending a COVID test, even if it's clearly allergy related? And so the nurse in each building will assess any child who complains of illness. And if the symptoms are due to any allergies, that's do documented allergies that we know of, they will not be required to go home or see their health care provider. So, and just so parents are aware that you, any student with allergies, we should have a document already on file from their healthcare provider stating they have these allergies. If we do not, if you can please make sure your child's school nurse does have that documentation so they want, would not be sent home with any of these symptoms. Um, the next one was, um, again, a reference to allergies. How would we do that? And again, we're not gonna send them home. We're gonna assess your child first. If they have allergies, they will not be sent home. And that's, I think that again about uh, allergies again was the next one. So I hope I answered that question. The next one is on medications. How will parents bring their child's medication to school this year? So if we've already started taking a medication, so please contact your school nurse, whether by um, email or phone and leave a message for them and to arrange a time for you to have that medication dropped off. 
we can meet you outside. You can come in at this time um, during the, we will always take medications if, if they're needed. So again, just make arrangements with the school nurse. We can either meet you outside if you're not coming in or we will bring you into the office. And I think that answers those questions. Okay, thank you. So the next, the next question is about orientations. Um, it's a good question. It says, if one third of all the grades are going in the building a week later, <clears throat> why can't one third of freshmen attend live orientation? So did you want to answer that, Jamie? I, I could. Sorry, if you want to start, Mary, and then I'll follow up with you with the details, if that's so okay. Basically, that question was brought to our general counsel, and basically the advice was that um, school didn't technically start until September 4th and that we, according to the governor, school buildings were closed until we officially opened them. And at the time of the planning, our general counsel had advised that we should do our orientations remotely. Right. And, you know, we were also concerned because we didn't want to plan for something in person and then, you know, things that are constantly changing and then not give students an opportunity. So at the high school and I know in the middle school, we are all planning uh, virtual orientations. Um, this morning, a video went out to all the freshmen. It's on the website um, and I believe on Facebook uh, where like just an introduction to our freshman orientation leaders and um, just an explanation of what students can expect on Wednesday for the freshman orientation. And we're super excited. So if you haven't checked out the um, video, please do. It'll make you smile. It will, it was awesome. And there's also going to be a middle school virtual orientation as well. As far as the elementaries, um, I, we have gotten a lot of questions about kindergarten orientation. And Mr. Salamando, you can jump in, but I believe we have decided that we will do some type of in-person kindergarten orientation on September 4th, the, the, the Friday. So did you wanna jump in and talk about that, John? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. So we are going to also do something virtual. Uh, we, we all had in our buildings PowerPoints that we normally use to um, do presentations to the parents in, in, a, in a normal year when we have everybody come to the school. So those will be pushed out. Um, there may be some short video clips in those PowerPoints as well. And then we are also planning on having the children being able to come and meet their teacher um, of course, using social distancing and getting to see the classroom. So it would be the teacher and the child only entering the classroom um, and the parent waiting outside. And then the child would just basically get to look around and then return out to the parent. Um, so at least that they get to see a, the person uh, before they actually walk into the classroom to try and help alleviate some of that anxiety they might have on the first day of school. Thanks, John. Um, next question talks about recess. Um, kids in elementary school, what are we going to do to properly store the masks when they are outside? Um, we still have to talk about that, but we have talked about Ziploc bags. Um, am I out? Am I not? Is that, um, did you want to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. We were thinking, we we're actually thinking about lanyards. So we are in the process of trying to figure out what we are going to do to make sure that they don't end up on the ground. Um, and I am sure with all the wonderful, smart people we have, we'll think outside the box and we will absolutely come up with something. Um, this is for the middle school. I do not see him here. So um, it's asking about, um, are they all going to be able to go outside or will they use the ticket distribution system as in the past, limiting the number of students? But well, we will absolutely have to limit the number of students that are going out for recess for any one time. So I'm sure that Mr. Burns and his staff have a system in place to make sure that kids are um, able to go outside, but that they are socially distanced. Will children who are siblings be able to play with each other at recess? Uh, well, John, you can answer that, but typically, if I'm not mistaken, um, it's by grade level. So unless they're twins or triplets, um, most of the time siblings would not be together on the playground. But John, did you want to speak to that? Uh, yeah, that's not a problem. So siblings, of, yes, in different grade levels would not even be at, the, at recess at the same time. However, if they were uh, twins or triplets and they are all in the same cohort, the same class, which they would be on the same day, then certainly they're together all day long and they would be able to interact at recess. Okay. 
Another question about indoor recess. Um, as with everything, nothing is going to look like normal school. So again, students will be given um, games or things to play with or something to do that is just going to be theirs for the week. And we do know that what it, we are going to allow the use of real books and real manipulatives, but those things will be just for that child for that week. And then they will be put into, um, you know, a three-day isolation period or they will actually be sprayed with disinfectant so that other children don't use them before they have been disinfected. Um, so again, they will be playing more independently during indoor recess. Next question is about working families and what are we doing to accommodate working families? Why will you not consider making accommodation so my daughter can go to the same school as her half brother? Um, why will you not consider bending the zoning rules to make it easier for our families to care for their children? Um, so we have made accommodations for blended families um, so that, for example, if your name is Sarah Tour and your um, child's name is Quill and one of the kids is a Sarah Tour and one of the kids is a Quill, if they weren't going to be on the same team, they, they will be on the same team. Um, so we have made that. Um, what we have not and cannot make accommodations for is if you live in a ditch, different catchment area. So if one family lives in the Walden School District and one lives in the East Coldenham School District, we cannot make accommodations so that children can go to different school buildings. Um, again, the next question asks for if we will be giving child care for essential workers. Um, talks about there being a, one is a nurse and one is a teacher. And at this time, the district is, does not have the resources or the ability to provide daycare for um, essential workers. Um, our teachers, the teachers here in Valley Central are essential. Um, we are all essential that we, to the operation of the school district. And I absolutely wish that we could provide some sort of daycare for students, but we just don't have those resources. We talked about that. Um, I thought I saw, let's see. Nope. I don't know. There's a question here about sports. Um, should sports start on September 21st? Will they be busing to get those students to the school in the afternoon? Or are parents responsible for transportation? Did you want to take that? Do you have the answer for that? I think we'll make that plan when we get some further guidance on uh, whether or not sports will actually start in September or not. Okay, the next question is kind of a, di a little difficult to answer. It's about staffing. And it says, what will happen if too many teachers call out of work all at once, claiming illness, and then there's a severe shortage to teach the online students plus the in-person students? Will the school district administration do then to get our children educated? Do you have another plan for this? So um, that's a tough question. Um, we're gonna take things as they come and I think we're pretty good problem solvers. I, I don't really anticipate that we're gonna have um, an influx of teachers just you know, suddenly calling out ill. They have been contacting our human resource department as they should be um, with the modifications that they need, et cetera. Um, so if we have a severe shortage to teaching in the district, we would have to deal with that as it, as it, as it comes. So how do the teachers feel about going back into the classroom? If it were up to them, would the school year start online? I think that depends on which teacher you talk to. So I really can't speak for the teachers, um, but I can tell you that I have had emails from teachers that are concerned about coming back and I have had emails from teachers that are cannot wait to come back and absolutely want to be with their students. So I don't think that I'm qualified to be able to tell you how all of the teachers in the district are feeling. Um, there's a question here about how many teachers have applied for the FMLA. Um, I don't really feel like I'm at liberty to discuss that. It's a personnel issue. Um, busing. So here's some busing questions. Did you want to address the busing questions, Mr. Conklin? Sure. So the first question is, uh, my son is 12 one so he will be attending five days a week. 
I just want to make sure there will still be busing for these kids. Yes, uh, absolutely. There will be busing available for these students every day. However, uh, we are encouraging everyone to please uh, drive your child to school if possible. Uh, the next question, will the 1211 students go in person to school five days a week or only they're assigned two? Um, uh, these students will go five days a week if the parents choose to do so. When will we know if kids will get the transportation for school? So transportation will be offered to everyone who um, needs it. Um, based on the survey that was put out earlier, there are quite a few um, parents that responded that you do not need transportation. If you have changed your mind since then, please contact the transportation department so we can be sure that your child will be routed for a bus. Um, next question is how will transportation work for students that choose 100% online for VC, but in person for CTEC? Um, so we're still working out those details. Um, so we should have more information on that next week. Uh, you know. uh, the next question is, is it too late to change busing arrangements? I'm not sure my child's aftercare program will be opening for the year, and that's how I have busing set up. No, it is not too late. Um, we're willing to work with you, but you have to contact uh, the transportation department or your building as soon as possible. The next question is, when will bus pickup times be sent home or when will parents be notified? Uh, we're hoping to do that late next week, um, uh, hopefully by the end of the week, but it may end up being the, the beginning of the, the next week. Uh, the next question is, are the bus pickup locations the same for those who are going to school as last year? Uh, I believe so. There may be some changes here and there for bus stops, but um, most, most bus stops should be the same. Will the time schedule for bus pickup be the same or different this year? Um, it's, it depends. Some may be the same and some may be different. So our next question jumps back to the hybrid remote survey, the survey that was taken. So I did publish that data on the web page and I've recently provided it um, to, all the, to the Board of Education. Um, however, the question here is, what is the updated ratio of hybrid versus remote? So the updated uh, is about 66%, between 66 and 67% have asked for the hybrid instructional method. 34% have asked for the 100% online. So the next question says, the original survey did not offer an opportunity for the entire district to do a late start. Is it possible that many families would like to see everyone start the school remotely? I would answer that question and say no, because if they did, then in, in my opinion, then they would have chosen to start the school year remotely. It didn't, the question was, do you want to start the year, school year 100% remotely or do you want to start the school year in a hybrid? So that was the question. The question did ask, how do you want to start the school year? Um, I'm going to jump down to another question that talks that Mr. Exanthus already addressed is that there are some school districts that are opting for a three week waiting till September 21st or, or more. Um, there are multiple reasons for that, but as we've said already, and I, we spoke with Mrs. Griffin, who works directly, you volunteer with the Department of Health still, right? Who works directly with the Department of Health. This is the lowest infection rate we have had throughout the crisis. So we would think that one would want to start when we were at our lowest infection rate. If, as some are saying, there is a possibility for a spike in the later part of the fall, one could assume that the infection rate is only going to get worse into the fall as opposed to better. And so by waiting, there's a very good chance that you're never going to go back. And so we believe, like Mr. Exanthus has already said, and we have gotten a lot of input from parents, that people would like an opportunity to get back in the buildings. And so that's what we've offered. And so, yes, just like with a snow day, you don't want to be the last man standing, but we believe just as Warwick and Cornwall are continuing on with their hybrid method, I have to say we have an exceptional team. Everyone on this Google Meet 
as well as every member of the VCAA and um, the food service department and the maintenance department, the facilities, they've been working literally around the clock. And yes, we should all be working hard. And, and that's what you pay us to do is to work hard. But this team has been working exceptionally hard. And from what they're telling me, they're ready. And so not that we're not going to have glitches and it may be a little bit messy. And once the kids come back, there's going to be some changes that we need to make. But we feel like we're ready to have them come back and we're not going to be any more ready in three weeks. And so that is why we have decided to go with the recommendation that we open in the hopes that these kids will come in, meet their teachers, develop relationships. And if we do have to go 100% remote, it'll be a very simple transition. Mm. <sighs> a lot of these questions are why aren't we like going to be like everybody else? But I have to tell you, I'm a parent too. And I wish my district wasn't going 100% remote. I wanted my son to go back. And when I found out that they went 100% remote, you know, I wasn't happy. So it is hard to please everybody, but we're going to do the best we can. You have a choice. And right. 66%. And, 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 and since we have said that we have received several emails from parents that say that they appreciate the fact that we're not just following along with the crowd and that we believe now I'm not saying like the message I sent last night with the new protocol in place, They've made the proximity um, more difficult to, to if, if someone is to get sick, it's a little bit, the contact tracing in and all that is a little bit more difficult to allow us to stay open. However, just as with the camps that have been going on all summer, we do feel like keeping, washing our hands, sanitizing, cleaning the desk, using those safety shields that we're putting on desks, requiring masks of all students, social distancing, that we have, that we are able to keep everybody safe. Um, so this question here, I'm confused about the Board of Ed needing to vote to reopen for the hybrid method. Can you elaborate on what goes into that vote? Who is on the board and does their vote need to be unanimous? Uh, no, nothing ever needs to be unanimous. It's a majority vote. Um, so there's many things that the Board of Education votes on. They vote on approving curriculum. They vote on the school calendar. They vote AIS plan, the professional development plan. Um, so they vote on many things. Um, and it's really just making sure that we have the support of our Board of Education. Um, they are the governing body of our district, and it would make all the sense in the world to um, include them in that. Um, so nothing really goes into the vote other than they have been, they are aware of what our plan is. They um, have heard us and we will speak again on Monday and then they can all make their choice. Do you have anything to add to that? What, hap well, what, um, what happens if the board doesn't vote for the plan reopening? Then we would go 100% remote. Mm. And, and here it says, what makes us able to um, open safely when the rest of the districts can't? But the districts are all not opening for a variety of reasons. And I don't know that everybody's privy to the reasons that they're not opening, but there's a myriad of reasons. And I don't know that I, you know, I know what I hear, but it's not necessarily that they don't feel that they can safely open, as I said, we feel like we can, and so that's what we're going to do. As administrators, adults, parents, and educators, can you honestly say that Valley Central is ready to open? We're as ready as we're going to be. Um, I don't, you know, is anybody ever ready to open a school in the midst of a pandemic? And um, I mean, it's very difficult, but I have to say, I think that we have looked very closely. I think we have the best health and safety overseer in the county. I think we have the best person in charge of transportation. I think that we are in very good hands. And I think that because 66% of our people have asked for us to open, that we have put all our energy in being able to do that for you. 
and I can't speak for the other districts, but I can speak for Valley Central and we have a great team here and we are VC proud and VC strong. And I think that we can do this. Um, there's a question here about snow days. Um, I really can't answer that yet. You've, this is a question that's asked a lot. Can I change um, from hybrid to 100%? Yes, you can. Um, can parents? Again, yes, if you're special ed, you can opt into being 100% remote. Yep, if a student is quarantined, will they move to 100% online instruction for the duration of the quarantine? Yes, if, you're, if your child is quarantined, we would have to provide them with instruction. That's correct, right? Okay, another one about the teams. Team one will miss many Mondays. Um, there's three diff there's a difference of three days between team one and team two. However, we are not really sure, we never are sure if there's going to be any days where perhaps we would have to close for heat or we, we had to close for heat one time last year. Um, and also I did speak to a parent personally. And if we get to, you know, March and we're still in this method and we see that one team has been shortened those three days, we could very easily, with two weeks or more notice, send out a notice that says, you know, Friday, whatever date is going to be a team one day as opposed to a team two days. So we will absolutely address the equity of instructional days. Um, some more questions about cleaning. Can you answer number one on cleaning? So there's a question um, about cleaning the um, the buses between the uh, the runs. We are working with the bus company to ensure that the high contact areas will not only be wiped down between the morning and the afternoon, but um, wiped down between each tier of runs. Um, so between the high school and the middle school and the middle school and the elementary school, uh, we expect that the high contact areas will be wiped down and that the bus company will disinfect the buses nightly. About. So there's a question about will classroom bathrooms be cleaned frequently throughout the day? So I think there's going to be increased uh, cleaning throughout the whole building throughout the day, but especially bathrooms in high contact areas. Um, exactly how and who will sanitize classroom desks, doorknobs, uh, shared materials, and lunchroom be cleaned between each and every period if a different student will be sitting at the desk? Um, yes, our custodial staff will be um, handling that. Do you want to talk about the desks, what the plan is for that? Sure. So at the middle school and high school level, there was a question about how are we going to clean all these desks? So one thing that is important to remember, and I don't know if I said it tonight, and I apologize, so we've had quite a few meetings today, but um, students will be sanitizing their hands before they go into the classroom, after they go into the classroom, our orders from our district doctor have been changed that students in the secondary can carry their own hand sanitizer um, at all times and they can use it themselves. We are going to be providing, so desks will be sanitized every night. Um, they will be cleaned and sanitized every night. When students come into school in the morning on their desk will be a sanitized desk protector which will belong to them for the day. It will have a mark on it so that they know what's the top and what's the bottom, that it's easily um, rollable. It will, they will take it with them from class to class. If it should get dirty or there should be a problem, they will be provided with another one. In the midst of the days, our custodial staff will be doing um, as much cleaning of the desks as they can. They'll be cleaning the cafeterias as well. We have spoken about hiring um, attempting to hire some substitute custodial staff for the secondary schools um, to be primary responsibility is the cleaning of the desks. Um, is that all the cleaning ones we have? Oh, and number three here. So the question comes out a lot is why didn't we do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday with Wednesday being a deep clean? So we didn't do Monday and Tuesday because if we did that and a child left the building on Tuesday, they would not be able, they would not see a teacher again until the following Monday, which is almost a full week. By doing Monday, Thursday, 
They will see the teacher the last day on Thursday and be back on Monday, Friday, Saturday, um, I'm sorry, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. Um, so it's only three days as opposed to six days. So the team felt that that was better for instruction and that it was better for continuation of learning. And the school building can still be cleaned deeply on Wednesdays because although the teachers will be in the classroom, there'll be more opportunities for the custodians to be in classrooms cleaning throughout the day. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, right there, seven. Is that enough? But the other thing is, um, I mean, parents can, as just as we have, um, are allowing kids to carry their own hand sanitizer, um, if a parent wants to send in antibacterial wipes with their student, which I will be doing for my own son, um, if he ever gets to go back to school, um, they will absolutely be able to use those if they would like. But as again, we do have a special product that sanitizes the desks in 10 minutes. So it's sprayed on, it evaporates, and it is um, they are disinfected. This one um, is for the high school, Jamie. It talks about what is the plan for changing classes in the high school? I don't see how students can keep six feet apart at all times when traveling from one class to another. Yep. So as I mentioned, um, we're going to have the building uh, set up into zones. Um, once we get our schedules settled, um, those just went out uh, this morning and we know there's going to be lots of changes. Once we get the numbers um, all put together, we'll make adjustments to how the students are staggered or how they move throughout the hallways in order to prevent that. Again, we will have um, you know, obviously, just like every other building, a lot less students in the hallways, which will be helpful. Students will also be required to walk on one side of the hallway in one direction and another side, um, another direction on the other side of the hallway to maintain the distance, um, you know, across across the hallways. Um, so and we're also working on um, particular directionals for certain um, stairwells as well. So that work is ongoing as we look at our our numbers with scheduling and where the students will be at in the building at particular times. Thanks, Jamie. Um, very quickly, so there's a Facebook post going around stating that under the COVID Act, if the school feels your child so symptoms, we can send them to a testing center. And this is very scary. It's absolutely not true. So don't believe everything you read on Facebook because we would never take your child to a COVID center. Um, and absolutely never take your child anywhere without your knowledge. So next one, good question. Can you explain in detail how the new guidance from the Department of Health will make reopening more difficult and how these difficulties are being addressed by the district? So that is something that I did state in my message last night. And basically, so, and I'll let you reiterate, but what happened, what happened is with the proximity. So proximity used to be defined in one way and now it's defined in another. And I'm going to let Ms. Griffin explain to you why that makes it more difficult for us to stay, not to, not to open, but to stay open. So originally the guidance was if you were six feet apart and wearing your mask, you would not be a considered a close contact, but we are not, we are considered a congregate setting. So anybody in a classroom, whether they have their mask on or were six feet apart at all times, they would be considered a close contact now. So a whole classroom, if one child came back positive or a staff member came back positive that was in a classroom, the whole classroom, including any adult in the classroom, any faculty member would need to be quarantined for 14 days. But that also goes into saying if the child was in the lunchroom, that whole class, again, that whole lunchroom would have to be quarantined because they had their masks off also. But anybody, in, and for high school and middle school, they do go back and forth between classes. So that would involve multiple classes and multiple staff members. So. so with that being said, it's very important that when you send your children to school that you are reminding them how important it is to make sure that masks on are at all time, that we are washing our hands, that we are socially distancing. Um, but as, as Connie said, reopening is not going to be the problem. We can absolutely reopen. The guidance just makes it more difficult to stay open should someone come down with COVID-19. Okay, supplies. 
Will the district be providing hard copies of guided reading books for me to build literacy skills? Um, we will not be providing hard copies of guided reading books, but we are looking into different um, online um, forums, such as RAS Kids, Reading A to Z, Zora, that we will be providing access um, for children to have. We're going to try very hard not to send many materials back and forth. Students will have supplies that, that are used in school, and we will send home a small supply small bag of supplies such as pencils and erasers and highlighters to students that need them at home. Chromebooks will go back and forth. Um, that's a question here. Even our little ones, we're going to trust them to put those Chromebooks in their book bags and carry them back and forth. Um, we are also going to um, be sending you out a um, more information on the Chromebook distribution plan that will be coming shortly. Um, what are we going to do about kids that are receiving 100% online about the basic necessary school supplies that the district has supplied? We will absolutely um, put together some sort of a distribution for that. Mr. Salamando, do you have a, do we have a specific plan for that already? Yes, we do. Uh, we work, uh, the four principals were working on putting some schedules together and that's that all that information is going to go out next week. Uh, for parents so that they know we're trying to coordinate it with the Chromebook distribution. So parents only have to come to the school once. Thank you. Did you want to hit on the ventilation? I think we did breakfast and lunch. That's you have about the winners. So there's some questions about uh, ventilation. Um, you previously stated that windows will be open more frequently and consistently. Uh, will there be screens on the windows, windows to prevent insects, allergens from entering the classrooms? Yes, our director of facilities is working uh, as we speak to ensure that um, screens are on the windows. Is it possible to leave the windows uh, open overnight? I, I don't know the answer to this question, but I would, I would um, I would say probably not out of a security concern, but it's something we could definitely look into. Yeah, we could, that's a good idea. We could actually open them up uh, early. Um, there was a question, uh, let me just jump back to breakfast, lunch. Uh, what if it is a hardship to go and pick up lunches each day from various schools, be it no vehicle? Um, so in, in that instance, we're gonna ask if you could please contact us, um, uh, the food service director, Eleanor Mills, and we'll be, in, um, we'll be sure to uh, help get a meal to you. The kitchen, which question? Question back to ventilation. Um, filtration systems, there are none available in most kitchens. Uh, also, I'm not particularly confident um, in all of the cleaning procedures due to watching some of the custodians at work. Uh, lastly, how is ALC getting fresh food? So the, uh, the last part of that, um, the ALC will get its food just like it has in the past. It's prepared at the middle school and uh, shipped over daily. Um, filtration systems in the kitchens, um, I'm not particularly um, sure about that question other than there's no new filtration systems added um, but I believe our ventilation systems across the district um, meet code. There's a question here about school pictures and how that will be done. So that I do not have an answer for you, but we will get more information for you. And Marianne, if I can just add, just because that question was on there, I did a little bit of research with our... Um, our advisor for the yearbook who deals with our, our class pictures. So we are going to check to see if they have any appointments. Maybe we can make some kind of schedule for like after school appointments or, you know, weekend appointments if parents who have kids that are 100 percent online still want pictures. Honestly, we haven't even figured out um, how we're going to be doing underclassmen pictures for um, the kids that are actually in person yet either. So more to come on all of those. Right. Thank you. And the okay, same. and lastly, there is a question here 
about snow days. Will there still be snow days now that remote learning has been introduced asking for bed and all? So that um, you could tell Ben, <laughs> we're hoping, um, we're hoping. Um, but you know, that's something now that we really can't answer for you yet either. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but I do want to say thank you for um, supplying all these questions to us. I do ask that you take a look at the website, reach out. Um, we have been receiving a lot of emails. And again, um, I try to make sure every email that comes to me is answered within 48 hours. So please continue to send your questions. Um, and other than that, I just want to make it clear. There is absolutely no way that the Valley Central School District can ensure that when we open our doors, that nobody will contact um, COVID-19. We absolutely cannot assure that. But what we can tell you is that we are going to follow the recommendations and the guidance of the Orange County Department of Health, the New York State Department of Health, the New York State Education Department, and the wishes of our community. And we are going to open our doors for those of you who wish to send your children back. And we are going to provide them with the best education we can in person, remotely, and online. And we give you our word on that. And with that, Mr. Xanthus, will you have any closing? No, I wasn't going to say that. I just, in closing, I just want to say yeah, I think we're coming back, but it's not going to be like it was. Uh, I was saying today, or Mr. Ivan was saying, you know, teachers aren't going to have their kids probably in their seat at 720 in the high school or 810 in the middle school or um, 715 in the elementary schools. It's going to take a while to get people in. Um, we're going to be taking their temperatures. We're going to need cooperation from everybody. So I, I just I want to make sure everybody's clear of that. We recognize that. But I, I also want to tell you, and I say a lot, we're going to come every day. We're going to do the best we can for your kids and for your families. And when we find things that we need to do different, we will adjust. The other thing I want to say on behalf of our kids, um, and I think we've talked a lot about this, but you know, I know each of the schools will be holding uh, class meetings, but the kids have a vested interest in this also. Uh, I, I was, I got to even I told me I said this in the beginning, but I've seen kids uh, throughout the summer, I saw two little, uh, two young eighth grade girls at all, all the other day, and um, I asked somebody, said, I can't wait to get back. One of them said, I, I've been around the house too long. I just, I, I need some structure. So we all heard stories about kids wanting to come back. But when they come back, and we're going to give them the direction that, hey, for this to work, you're going to have to do what we need you to do. We're going to have to, you're going to have to behave and, and keep social distancing. And I have great faith that the majority of our kids, not everyone, is going to work hard so we can stay open and keep people safe. So um, this is a, I keep saying it and I mean it, I don't think there's any community in Orange County quite like Valley Central and our kids are just kids that listen, they take direction, they're polite, they're courteous, they're humble, and uh, if we can get them here, I believe we can get them in a place so when you're going down the hall and things are doing the right. Not everybody, and we'll deal with the ones that uh, can't follow that. But um, just I want you to consider that and know that we're all partners of this and it'll work, but we all have to be going in the same way. So thanks again for your time and thanks everybody for all the good work. Appreciate it. Have a good evening.